Hello! Second review in one day! Yes! Also, it's a bit darker because I put the curtain down because my face was getting too warm. <laughs> so I will be reviewing Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury and just a little history lesson with my relationship with this novel. When I was 17, I had not, like, finished a novel, like read a novel in about four or five years. It was like, as soon as I hit high school, I just stopped reading, um, except for the stuff they made you read in high school. But then in like 2012, the Vlogbrothers had a book club with this book and I was like, okay, it's like, it's short, all right, fine. And I loved it. I loved it. This is the book that made me love reading again. And this sparked my want to read all the books that I've read in the past couple of years, that th those books are because I loved this book. And I have often called this book my favourite book, um, so I wanted to reread it. This book is set in the future, it's a dystopian novel, but unlike, say, The Hunger Games or whatever, the society seems fine. Like, mo the, the, the main character, Guy Montag, he lives in, like, the suburbs. He has a wife, he has a job. His job, however, is to be a fireman. And in, in this world, firemen, instead of, uh, you know, putting out fires, they start fires. In this world, books are illegal, and his job is to go around and find all the illegal books that are hiding out in people's houses and burn them. But, this is where sort of the plot comes in, Montag starts to think. He starts to question this world, this society that he lives in, and that evolves throughout the novel. I don't think this book would could ever be a movie, or at least a good one, because uh, it would just be like a sequence of events happening rather than the evolution of a psyche, because this book is like Montag's inner monologue and it changes, it, it evolves, and sometimes it's a bit jambled and the writing itself is a bit jarring, which I really like because it's understandable, you know, Montag is trying to you know, get out and change from this sort of conditioned thoughtlessness and that I can imagine being quite an uncomfortable experience. So one thing that I really liked in this book is the three-walled television. They have, Montag and his wife Millie, they have a room that is dedicated to television and I kind of imagine it as like this weird sort of 3D thing with three walls, it's kind of weird. But in this world, Millie's television is so vague, so insubstantial, there's like no plot there and it's like their entertainment is so dry, nothing happens. And I realised it's because they burn books. They have no culture of storytelling, you know, like television and movies and, and stuff, they reflect our culture. In this world, there is no culture. They burnt it. I mean, they have no stories. They're like ghosts of stories. There, there, there can be no, like, emotional satisfaction from a story when, like, all information is banned and burnt. Um... I mean, telling stories is such an innate human quality and it's like Millie herself feels this unsatisfaction from the stories that she's being given but she doesn't quite know why and she doesn't even realise it consciously that, that this isn't enough for her. So I used to think this book was just like pro-book but I realised that it's actually just pro-knowledge and pro-stories. It's nowhere near as like anti-technology as I originally started thought. Um, I mean, it even states in the novel that, like, television and movies and, and stuff like that can, you know, just uh, convey just as much information as just as much meaning as books can, but the problem is that they're not in this world. One of my favourite things about this novel, especially the first time I read it, is the unpredictability of the plot. This book has a classic three-act structure, like literally it has three parts, and that third part, oh my god, it's so engrossing and I I just love it. I just I just couldn't put it down even though it's a reread. Bradbury's writing just pulls me forward and makes me so anxious and like I'm it's like I'm there. One of the themes that stood out to me is the lack of time to just breathe and reflect. I mean, we're, we're constantly watching stuff and reading stuff and talking and, you know, eating and working and watching and reading and eating and working and, and it never stops. And because of that, it can feel so frivolous sometimes. And in a world where I literally have the internet in my pocket, I feel this pressure to like 
constantly be entertained and to be consuming entertainment and like I must never be bored and I just really appreciate Bradbury's message of no you of how important you know time to do nothing is and the importance of finding real places that make you feel you know connected and safe anyway he definitely puts this across better than I am doing now um, I love this novel and I was a bit scared because I've read so much since I've read this novel I was a bit scared that it wouldn't hold up to all the great books that I've read but actually I think it's the opposite all of these books that I've read over the past couple of years have increased my reading comprehension and now I've gotten so much more out of this I just I love it it, it is still my favorite book I gave it five stars and I just <sighs> I wish more people would read it because I love it <laughs>